Hello everyone, I'm Rachel and welcome to Rachel's Eight-Legged Wonders. collaboration so if you haven't seen that video yet you may want to pop over to his channel and watch that first part of the video first um, I will link the video either somewhere in the screen over here or in the description so that you guys can watch that as well but what I'd like to do um, Tom bred Versicolors um, Carabina Versicolors and they were through um, with Fear Not Tarantulas and um, so he used Tanya of Fear Not Tarantulas, he used her male and his own female to breed uh, the, the Carabina Versicolors and ended up with like 165 or 170 spiderlings, something like that. I can't remember the number, but it was something crazy. So what I wanted to do a little bit was talk about Versicolor care and how that changes as the animal ages. As if you're getting a, a Versicolor as a spiderling, um, the care is going to be fairly different from what it is as a juvenile to adult. This is a, um, an older juvenile here, a male. Still has a good amount of growing to do, but is at the point now where I can start treating it a little bit more like an adult with the care. So, um, as babies, these guys are, I'm going to open this top here and he's probably going to run out on my hand, so we'll see how this goes. They are flighty as babies. As adults, they're pretty easy going, but as babies, they are flighty. Let's see, oh, okay, he didn't run out. So, as babies, they are blue. Can you see that in the camera there? My wonderful husband is recording for me. They're blue, and these are arboreal tarantulas, meaning they are tree-dwelling, so you need to give them some height in their enclosure. This little one um, has just recently been housed in this tall vial, so he has not or she has not yet made her webbing, but I'm assuming that will happen in the next day or two. She's otherwise seemed very, very healthy, so I'm not worried about that. So with a Versicolor, adult and baby, what you want to remember is ventilation and moisture. Ventilation probably being uh, the most important thing for both stages here. So. I have a large vial that allows for airflow within the vial as well as the top with large holes cut in it. Um, ideally, something with cross ventilation is even better. Being that this vial is large, it allows for more air to enter and exit the vial that way. As babies, these guys need more moisture and higher humidity than the adults do. Adults, of course, do need some moisture. Stay in there, little one. Nope, 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 you stay in there. Um, adults do definitely need some moisture, as all tarantulas do need some level of moisture, whether that's a water bowl or some moisture in the substrate. But as babies, these guys need um, some additional moisture. Um, so what I usually do with them is I keep the substrate a little bit moist, and for that I use just my handy dandy um, little uh, condiment dispenser basically that I got at Walmart um, and so I just put a little bit in there into the substrate I have some moss in there that helps keep moisture in as well this is down here this kind of tan stuff here is sphagnum moss and sphagnum moss is an excellent excellent moisture retainer so it's good to have in any tarantula enclosure but especially one that's delicate like this little guy and needs some extra moisture and then what I also like to do, and this might actually make him run out on me, so we'll watch this. Um, Jesus, yeah. So I like to take a sprayer like this and um, just kind of mist the sides. Oh, he's good. He stayed in. Oh, there he is. All right. And then uh, with, with Versicolors and with a lot of Arboreals, actually, they prefer to drink off the sides of their enclosure. In the wild, they would be up in the tree and they would be drinking little water droplets off of leaves and off of pieces of bark, etc. So we're, you know, trying to replicate how they would normally live and eat and drink in the wild. 
nature tells them, don't go down, don't go down to the floor or the ground because that's where I get eaten. I'm an arboreal tarantula, I need to stay up high. So we need to replicate that as well as feed and water them appropriately. So when I'm feeding this little guy, I wanna make sure if he has a web, I'm gonna put the food actually in the web. He doesn't have a web yet because he's newly in this enclosure. So what I would do if in the next couple days I went ahead and fed him and he still doesn't have a web, is I would go ahead and put the food, say maybe, oh, stay in there, you little booger, like in this little green plant or something like that. And I would just take a very disabled or dead little roach or little cricket and put it in there for him uh, to eat. So again, with the, with the babies, ventilation is key, even more so than the moisture, but you, you do need to keep moisture in there. But if you don't have enough ventilation and you have a very moist enclosure, you're just gonna have a, a hot, steamy, you know, very um, moist enclosure without any ventilation, you're gonna end up essentially suffocating your spiderling um, with too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And as babies, like I said, these guys are very, very flighty, not aggressive in the least, but very flighty, not what I would consider easy going. Um, and they can also, uh, these guys have been known to, even if you do every single thing right, they are so fragile, sometimes they still just die and you don't know why. Um, so this is not one that I really recommend for a very early beginning keeper because it's very discouraging, especially if you get a spiderling, to do what you would think would be everything correct and still have your spiderling die. And in the case of a versicolor or a similar spider like an avicularia species, sometimes you can do everything right and the spider still dies and you just don't know why. Um, so once you get a little bit of experience under your belt, this would be a great addition to your collection. So I'm going to set this one aside and talk a little bit about the older version of these guys. So I don't know if you can see through the enclosure here. This is a older juvenile male versicolor. And if, let me just open the top so you can see the colors a little bit better. He's kind of in that in-between stage coloration. You stay in there. And these guys are more easygoing as older adults. Um, and as juveniles, but um, they're still, they can still be a little flighty, as you can see. But this is nothing. This is just him kind of running around a little bit. So as an adult, they still need moisture and they still need ventilation. But the, the care and the, the moisture requirements for these guys is nothing like it is with the spiderlings. Um, so what I do is I just keep um, a good sized water bowl in the enclosure. So that helps keep some moisture and humidity in as well as allows them to drink. As, when they're older like this, they will sometimes come down to the floor to drink. Um, they're a little bit braver than they are as spiderlings. Um, however, they're still gonna prefer to drink either off of their decorations or cork bark, their leaf or the size of the enclosure more so than down the bottom of the cage. So I still do miss down the cage some, but like with this little guy, I would be checking and making sure that there's some moisture every two, maybe three days at the most. And if he start looking like he's getting dried out at all, I would add moisture right then. These guys, it's okay if they dry out a little bit more as an older, um, as an older spider. Uh, they can handle it better. They have the waxy coating. These guys, when they're babies, just like any other spider, as a spiderling, they do not have the waxy coating on their cuticle, which a cuticle is just a fancy word for their exoskeleton. Um, waxy coating that helps keep water in. At this stage, that cuticle is very well developed. So once he gets water in, he's going to keep it. So you don't have to worry about it quite as much. Um, and again, these guys, as they age, are much calmer than they are as spiderlings. So you can be a little bit less vigilant with them when you're opening things up and looking. And when I, as you notice, when I opened this one up, as soon as I opened the, <clears throat> the top, he was right there, ready to spring out. And these guys are more just a little bit more easygoing. So at this stage, um, if you wanted, if you, even as a beginning keeper, if you wanted to add a versicolor to your collection, a uh, older juvenile to young adult or adult would be a good way to go. The care is much easier at this stage. They're not nearly as fragile. 
and they're much easier going. I'm not a big proponent of handling. I do occasionally handle, um, but these guys are known to be a decent handling tarantula, uh, but again, they can move very quickly. So unless you really feel like you have to handle, there's really no need to, to handle uh, these tarantulas. There are others that are, that are better for handling if you really have handling in mind. Some of the terrestrial species, um, which I can go over in a later video for you guys. But this is, again, the Carabina Versicolor. Can you, there we go. I'm gonna try to turn that over slowly for him. And this guy was also very recently rehoused, so he has not yet made his webbing. I imagine the next couple days he will do so. They're usually pretty fast about it. Really prolific webbers. It's really, really fun to watch them web. I can take them out of this now. I always like to use a secondary bin anytime I'm doing any kind of work or manipulation with my spiders. It just adds a second uh, degree of safety there for them. If they should get out of their enclosure, it gives me time to grab my catch cup and catch them. I'll grab my paintbrush and slowly coax them back into their enclosure, whichever works better at the time. So again, if you haven't seen the first part of this video where we were with Tom and talking about his Versicolor breeding experience, you may want to pop over there and watch that. And um, thanks very much, Tom, for the opportunity to collaborate with you. I appreciate it. It was a great time, and I hope you guys learned something about the Versicolor today. Have a great day.